I would like to announce the book launch of Moni Mosin, The Impeccable Integrity of Ruby R. I would like to invite Safina D. Elahi in conversation with the author, Moni Mosin. Thank you. Thank you. Asalaamu Alaikum, everyone. Welcome to the launch of The Impe Impeccable Integrity of Ruby R by Moni Mosin. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And thank you, Moni. Welcome to Karachi. Thank you. It's um, been five years since I was in Karachi, so it's such a pleasure to revisit this most cosmopolitan of cities in Pakistan. I think this is the mother city in many ways. And I'm very happy to be here. And thank you all for coming today. So Moni, let's, um, I think, begin with uh, how this book came about. And what do you think the role I for a writer, what is the role of a writer in this society? Not particularly Pakistani society, but any society. You know, um, Safina, a couple of days ago, about four days ago, I was in Lahore. And I was talking to uh, somebody I'd never met before. And he said to me, Ke aap likhti I said, Ji. So he said, Mujhe maaf ki jiye, aapki kitab nahi padi. So I said, Nahi, it's not a problem. Um, and he said, Ke maine isli nahi padi, kyunke main Pakistaniyo ki kitabe aksar koshish karta hon ke main na padu. <laughs> to maine kaha, kyun aapko uh, Pakistani uh, uh, adibo se kyun aapko nafrat hai? He said, Nahi, nafrat nahi hai. Asal mein baat ye hai. कि जब मैं किताब पढ़ता हूं उनकी तो मैं बहुत एक तो मैंने कोशिश की पर मैं बहुत ज्यादा फिर डिसअपॉइंट हो जाता हूं आई सेड क्यों आपको स्टाइल नहीं पसंद आपको सब्जेक्ट नहीं पसंद क्या है सो ही सेड नहीं असल में बात यह है कि यू नो दे डू अ डिससर्विस टू आवर कंट्री दे डू नॉट ट्राई एंड ब्रिंग अबाउट दे डू नॉट ट्राई एंड टॉक अबाउट द गुड थिंग्स इन आवर कंट्री दे ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट द बैड थिंग्स एंड दे गिव अ वेरी and these were his words, they create a very bad impression of Pakistan in the West and abroad. And that is why I feel very upset when I read their books, and that is why I don't read them. So I said, so what do you think is the role of the writer? And he said, the role of the writer is to create a good impression of their country. Um, and he said, well, do you agree with that? And I said, uh, actually, I don't agree with that. And he said, why? So I said, because a writer is not an ambassador, a writer is not a publicist, a writer is not in the government pay, a writer is somebody who is independent, and the writer must always tell their truth. They have, that is the whole point of a writer, to tell the truth as they see it. And that is why fiction matters. Because when people read or, or poetry matters is because when people read that truth, they connect with that truth. And that is the most important thing. And if you want to have another role, then I suppose it is to hold a mirror up to society, to show them how you see yourself and perhaps also how you see everybody around you. It is not for us to prescribe um, uh, remedies or tell people how to live or judge or lecture. It is our job is just to put it out there. And that is what I think is the role of a writer anywhere, mm. whether it is in um, Peru or whether it is in Pakistan or whether it's in Panama or wherever else in the world. No, no, I completely agree because I feel like a lot of people hold um, us writers responsible even filmmakers hmm. uh, who have a similar role ke ye, you know Pakistan ki galat baaton ke baare mein kyun baat kar rahe hai? but I think it is our responsibility to, to talk about the galat baatein and the sahi baatein to tell uh, it like it is to tell that, it like it is it. definitely yeah um, hum Lahore launch mein, I was attending it and uh, we were talking and I was listening actually uh, Intazar Hussain sahab ne aap se koi conversation ki thi jis Jee. mein unho ne koi uh, comparisons, I think, uh, two groups ke ke te. would you like to comment on that? Yeah, so my new book, this um, Impeccable Integrity of Ruby R, is a different work to the Diary of a Social Butterfly. So for those of you who uh, know me only through the Diary of a Social Butterfly, may find that this book is actually um, entirely different to what you expected. 
because it is not humorous. It is still satirical because it satirizes society, but it is not humorous in that sense. Um, and this book is about, uh, the, the reason why I was talking about Intazar Hussain in Lahore at the launch was because this book is about women. It's about two young women who want to change the world for the better. And they are feminists. And they are um, well-intentioned. And they are very powerful in their own way. But they operate and live in a patriarchy. And therefore, their, um, their ambit is circumscribed by the conditions in which they are. One person takes one choice, another person makes another choice. And therein lies the difference in the, in the book. But what Intizar Hussain Sahab said to me, it was at the Karachi Literary Festival about five or six years ago. And as you may know, Intizar Hussain uh, lived in Lahore, but he was not born in Lahore. He came from UP, and he was a migrant. And as such, he, I think he was, he was a, a young man when he arrived in Lahore. And therefore, he had a vantage point, both as a writer which, and as a thinker, and as somebody who was not born and bred there, which gave him a, um, an objectivity, um, which is not given to all of us. And he called me over and he said, I'm going to ask you a question. And you have to tell me. आपको कहना चाहता हूँ और आप मुझे बताइए कि आपका इसके बारे में क्या ख्याल है। So I said जी बताइए। So he said जब से हम पाकिस्तान में आए हमने देखा कि दो गिरो बड़ी तेजी से ऊपर आए हैं। पिछले 40 साल में खास तौर पे बहुत तेजी से ऊपर आए हैं। And I said वो कौन हैं? तो he said एक तो मुल्ला हजरत और दूसरी खवातीन। And I said I thought about it for a second and then I said but that's paradoxical. How can that be? So he said, "Aap dialectics jaanti hai? I said, "Thode bahati zada to nahi jaanti, but I know that from conflict there is um, resolution, which brings about change in society." So he said to me, "To yehi to dialectical dilemma hai Pakistan ka ki ye jo do girao upar aa rahe hain tezi se, um, ye aapas mein inka tukrao zarur hoga." And I said to him, what do you think of it? He said, we will see this, we will not be here, but we will see this. And we will have to do something for a while. And I thought about it, and I thought that maybe in my life, maybe my daughter will see it. But I was very heartened um, recently to see that actually the struggle has begun. It hasn't begun in Pakistan in so many ways, even though Sherry said very aptly, I think, that women are the agents of change in society. And even in the environmental um, devastation that we face, if there's going to be change, if there's going to be improvement, it's going to be brought through women's agency. But the place where I think it is happening, even as we speak, and which gives me great um, encouragement, and uh, it's a source of great inspiration and admiration, and also a little bit of fear, I have to say, is what is happening in Iran. Exactly what Intizar Hussain said is happening in our faces in Iran right now. And in the West, they are very, um, they are busy with the war on, in Ukraine, and they are, but something cataclysmic is happening. And it is, uh, I think, although it may well be that this particular uprising or revolt or rebellion or whatever you might want to call it or revolution could be put down. But I think you have already lost when you have to resort to violence. And I think the mullahs know that they've already lost. And it's a source of, as I said, great inspiration and, and hope for me that maybe in Pakistan also, we will see the same sort of change brought about by young women. Um, and, and this book is about such those sort of women, you know, who will be agents of change. And of course, of course, they will make mistakes. Of course, many of them will fall by the wayside. Of course, many of them will be misled. Of course, many of them will be bought off. Of course, many of them will retire hurt. But I think the journey, inshallah, will be one of hope and one of change. And I have great faith in the women of Pakistan, even though this book is not 
entirely a happy uh, read, but still, it, it is one of, it's about the acquisition of wisdom and how wisdom always comes at a cost. And how through your struggle, jo wo kehte hain, sona banta hai, uh, aag se guzar ke, that is what we, this book is about. No, for sure. Um, I know that most of you have not read this book um, yet. The book is available at the Reverie Publisher's stall. You are welcome to get it signed by Moni Mohsen as well. So um, when we were talking about the conversation we were going to have today, we tried not to keep too many spoilers because when we start talking about the themes and characters of the story, you know, you end up talking about the story itself. Um, but just to sort of give you an idea, um, I wanted to ask Moni that what made you choose politics as a foreground to this story? Because this story sort of revolves around a populist leader like you were mentioning before as well. Um, what made you decide for it to be politics rather than something else? So, you know, before I became a writer, I was a reader, and I still remain a reader. And um, when I used to read books which were newly published, I thought, ye kal kisi ne likhi aur aaj main ye rahi hu. <laughs> That is not so, as most, as you yourself will know as a writer, and any writers in this um, gathering will know, that writing has its genesis in thoughts and ideas which may have been planted in your head when you were a child, and you only write about it now. It, they, it, it has to gestate and it has to find its right moment. For me, that moment actually was 2016. I was watching television, Trump's campaign was happening, and if you remember, he made that comment about women and about grabbing women and how women actually like it and they like being harassed and abused. And at the same time, there was um, the trial of Harvey Weinstein and how his abuse had happened for uh, decades, how he had um, mistreated women and abused women uh, for, for, gen for, what, 20, 30 years, and nobody had said anything because he was powerful. And those thoughts started sort of trickling through my head. I started thinking, and then the Me Too movement happened, and, I, and, and populism started rising in the world, and all the populists, of course, were men. And the way they talked about women was either in very degrading terms or in terms of um, as if they were inanimate objects and, and they decided their, their future, etc. cetera. Um, so I began to think that another, when I was thinking of the Me Too movement and, and politics, etc., I also thought of Monica Lewinsky and what had happened to her and how Monica, became the target of hatred, of virulence, of a campaign of defamation, and how actually um, Clinton, having, um, having gone through the, um, what was that, the, you know, what do Congress do No, he didn't actually. Anyway, having gone through that period, or a difficult period, emerged as, as a senior uh, 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 politician, almost as a kind of uh, an elder statesman. And all was forgiven. But Monica Lewinsky, ko agar aaj bhi aap dekh lein, the first thing that goes through your head is what happened to her. And, and I was also very shocked and surprised that so many women were targeted Monica Lewinsky, including Hillary Clinton. Uh, he got off scot-free, but she was the um, target of much virulence and hatred. I also see that here in Pakistan, when something happens to a woman, like uh, a man targets a young woman, like Gulalai Ismail, women turn against her. And this is how patriarchy works, because you are taught that anybody, that men are not to blame. It's always a woman's fault. It's always she was asking for it somehow or the other. Even uh, Moni, the motorway incident. The motorway incident. Every, I mean, not everyone, but a lot of people were, you know, about the opinion that why was she out late at night? Yes. Why was she out of... Alone. Alone and out of petrol? I mean, it's a mistake that happens, right? But I could hear, I could hear the echoes saying that, you know, this is not what a woman is supposed to do. But she's just driving to a place. I mean, how is that something that a woman is not supposed to do? Um, 
which also brings me to the metaphor you were talking about uh, in the book you have you know put in a metaphor about pain yes uh, yes yes so the the book is actually about a young woman i started thinking how could i write about what happened to monica lewinsky can i put that in a pakistani context and also against the rise of populism and how people are divided into those who are for and those who are against and nobody can occupy any central ground so if you don't agree with us you are against us you are our enemy you are a traitor we are patriots you are traitors etc etc so the book is about a young woman who uh is a um who used to be reasonably well off and then her father dies and the mother and the daughter suffer a, a steep decline in their uh, economic and social status and then the daughter um wins a scholarship to a college in, uh, in england and she goes to study there with the clear intention that i'm going to get this um mba or whatever it is masters degree that she's doing and then i want to get a job in a bank and then i'm going to get a good salary and then i want to bring my mother and myself up back to where we were before when she's in london she gets invited to um a talk by a leader who is uh, a rising star in pakistan she goes to the talk and he is full of you know we will rebuild this country we will give it a backbone we will make it proud again we'll be a proud nation without actually telling you how they're going to do it by just saying you know jazba hoga and this hoga wo hoga and she gets so swept up by the rhetoric that she decides to chuck her degree and join him when he asks her to become his social media advisor and she does that and then the rest of the story is about what happens to her after that when she comes back to pakistan but before she comes back to pakistan after the lecture all the students say to this great leader ke chale chale sir hum aapko khane pe leke chale so wo kehta hai ki acha maine kahin jana tha par chale aap kehte hain to chalte hain and he they take him to a restaurant they're all students and he is a this star and they uh, they order lots of food he eats very well etc etc then he turns to them and he says and now i must leave you and he gets up and he walks to the door and the proprietor comes up behind him and said says sir wo bill ni ada hua and uh, he turns around and he looks at the students and he looks at the proprietor as if you expect me to pay and the students jump up and say nahi nahi sir ye nahi hamari hogi treat hum denge paise aap jaye aap jaye and that it is a metaphor for people who actually never ever pay in society other people pay but the rich and the powerful do not pay and we know many many people who have never even paid out of their pockets you know everything is done for them everything is made possible for them and i don't mean payment just in terms of of financial uh, exchange of 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 cash or whatever but in terms of uh consequences consequences for their actions they don't pay the west also does not pay pakistan is paying the price of the carbon emissions of the west this is how it works in in societies where and and the heroine's mother says to her don't you know this is a place where the rich eat the poor and this is what happens in the book and that was the metaphor that you were talking about moni also i think we should keep an eye on the yeah um are we out of time 5 minutes okay so this is actually a question as a reader um more than anything else i feel like the story starts with a lot of hope you know um the reader is given a lot of hope and i think even ruby the main character is very hopeful she gets into the party and she you know does away with her degree with hope and integrity like you said before as well she's the only one with integrity did you as a writer mean for saif to bring about hope uh, in the story you know safina i have to say i lived in britain through brexit I watched very closely what happened in America under Trump. Yeah. I am watching Modi. I've seen Imran Khan. I saw Bolsonaro. Um and I see that people most of these leaders um are cynical people. Um they will give you messages which are very vague, which are all about hope. Jisko Urdu mein kehte hain sabz baagh dikhana logon ko. वो दिखाए जाते हैं एंड पीपल एंड मे बी दे होप दैट इट विल हैपन पर हैव्स दे डू बट दे डोंट हैव द प्रैक्टिकल सोल्यूशंस टू द प्रॉब्लम्स दैट दे हाईलाइट एंड पीपल गेट स्वेप्ट अवे बाय द रेटरिक दे गेट टेकन इन बाय द 
sweet promises, and invariably people are let down. Invariably, I mean Hitler was 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 one such. The way that the the and social media, the, the book is also quite a lot about social yeah. media and its role in society, and how it brings about divisions and creates um, great chasms in society and conflict in society. Well, you know, the playbook was actually written by Goebbels uh, when he was trying to bring about uh, the transformations that Nazi Germany needed in, in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Um, thank you so much. Thank you to the Adab Festival, Amina Appa, Shama Appa, for letting us launch um, this wonderful, wonderful no novel. Thank you, Moni, from flying uh, thank you. from Lahore. It was a bit of a, you know, we were concerned about the weather. And thank you, everyone, for attending this session. Um, Ek sawal. Sawal, I think, I was asking this question. I think she's just going to hand you the mic, because... Your message is that one cannot trust the leaders, you know. One you cannot? Trust the leaders. Leaders. Leader. Uh, uh, nation cannot trust a single leader. Your message. Nation cannot trust a single leader. Oh, ah, yeah. Well, what choice do we have? Your, your message conveys. I think what we need to do is have the... The answer is actually the process, the process of elections, the process of democracy. Mm. And we will have leaders who will disappoint. We will have leaders who will let us down. And then we vote them out. And then we choose new leaders. And slowly, that is the way the rest of the world has done it. And I think the answer is the process, the process of democracy, unfettered democracy, that for every four years, you have your election. And, and also, democracy doesn't just mean voting. It means holding your leaders to account. It means asking difficult questions. It means speaking against them when you feel that they have done wrong. It's freedom of speech, freedom of press. Those things are very important in a democracy. And, and, and the, uh, the voice of the ordinary citizen is very important in a democracy. Also, I think not blindly follow a leader is what yes. you know, we're talking yes. about. Keep, keep our ears and eyes open. And then, like you said about accountability, then we hold them accountable. If they're not able to deliver their subs bar, then you know, that's where um, the public holds them accountable. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, I think. I don't have to ask I'm sorry. No, no, no problem. We were just, I do we, we have time for it? Can I talk to you? I have to comment on this. Yes. I have to comment on this. I was just saying this to Zahra. I have read a social butterfly, and my daughter is a big fan. I am a little bit of a victim. So, she has read a social butterfly, and she had something else in my mind. A writer of the concept. But today, when you listen to me, I want to comment on this. So, I want to say this. I have read a lot of days after this. I have read a lot of days after this. I have read a lot of days after this. I have read a lot of days after this. I have read a lot of days after this. I have read a lot of days after this. گفتگو سے پتا چل رہا ہے کہ وہ بحض لکھتی نہیں ہے لیکن وہ جانتی ہیں سمجھتی ہیں اور اس پوری اور بولتی بھی بہت ہی اچھا ہے اور بہت شکریہ اور میری کچھ نظیمی میں نے آج آپ کو سن لیا بہت شکریہ آپ کا بہت بہت شکریہ تینک یو ایم ریلی ہمبل بہت شکریہ آپ کا تینک یو فر کمنگ آل او یو تینک یو سو مچ ایم ڈیپلی گریٹ فل تینک یو گیس uh, thank you, Moni, and thank you, Safina. Wonderful session. Thank you. Uh, ji, ek, ek no, Moni, hum aur Nurul Huda, dono yehi baat kar rahe the ki humne aksar o beshtar likhne wali ladkiyon ko jo hamare bahut hamse bahut young hai, unki kitabon ko paha. Lekin unko jab humne sona, to humne utna luth nahi aaya jitna kitab padke mehsoos hua tha. لیکن تم نے جو بات کی اور جو تمہارا انداز تھا بات کرنے کا اس سے واقعی بہت خوش ہوا بہت خوش ہوا اور اللہ میاں تمہیں زیادہ توفیق دے لکھنے کی اور اسی طرح لکھتی رہو اور اسی طرح اسی موضوع کو سامنے رکھ کے لکھتی رہو آپ کا بہت شکریہ بہت بہت شکریہ تینکیو 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 تینکیو
um, makes us think, it makes us feel, and it makes us question. And I, I hope it also that. makes you laugh. And it makes <laughs> us laugh at ourselves and, um, and also gives us hope. Thank think. you. May I just end with a joke here? Yes. Abhi, just before, I was telling this in Lahore also. Um, last year, we came from, and, and you know, when people say to me, Ki, aapko kahan se milti hai inspiration, ye, jo aap likhti hai, diary of a social butterfly, aapko jokes kahan se aate hai, aapko ye mazaiya, jo ye aap, aapka khayal hai, ye kahan se ubharta hai, to mein soch rahi thi, ke ye, jo roz marra ki zindagi, isi mein se sab kuch milta hai, to we taken a flight, uh, a virgin flight from London to Lahore, and I don't know if you know Lahore airport, but agar wahan teen jahaz ek vakt aaj hai, to sab kuch band ho jata hai, ना सामान आता है ना पासपोर्ट स्टैंप होता है वहाँ पे बस उधम मच जाता है तो हम आए तो वहाँ से दो यू ए की फ़्लाइट्स भी आईं और हम भी साथ थे तो सामान लेते 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 कोई घंटा लग गया बाहर अनाउंसमेंट हो गई थी कि फ़्लाइट हज़ ऑलरेडी लैंडेड तो लोग वहाँ पे मेरा ख्याल जो लेने आए हुए थे वो परेशान थे कि ये क्यों नहीं निकल रहे लोग तो जब हम निकले तो हम मेरा ख्याल हम सबसे पहले वर्जन की फ़्लाइट से निकले बाहर तो बाहर आए तो वहाँ पर सब हजूम था लोगों का तो एक आदमी ने मेरे मियाँ का बाजू पकड़ के ऐसे कहा सर आई यू वर्जन तो मेरे मियाँ ने उसे कहा यस आई एम वर्जन सो आई ट्वीटेड दैट एंड आई रोट दैट दिस इज वॉट हैपन टू आस दैन अ फ्यू डेज लेटर इमरान खान मेड सम स्टेटमेंट विच आई टुक ऑब्जेक्ट टुक एक्सेप्शन टू सो आई ट्वीटेड अबाउट दैट एंड आई क्रिटिसाइज इट so obviously all the trolls came after me all the pti supporters came after me but one man wrote and he said now i know if i was your husband i would also be a virgin <laughs> <laughs> and with that i'll leave you with that note thank you everyone thank, thank you so you. much for attending this launch bahut shukriya moni and uh, safina